Hi again, this is Jeff, your ProtoPie expert, and this is another ProtoPie Pro Tip. In my last video, I showed you all about the new feature called Smart Jump, and I showed you how it works with Figma, and I left you with this example here. If I click on the Oh, come the wolves, I get my details screen, and if I click back, I get um, it animates back and forth. But there was this little bit of animation where things moved up and down a little bit here. If I scroll down, and if I scroll down to this one right here, you're, you're going to see it even more. And it does put things back the way they are, but I don't like that my list scrolls each time. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to take advantage of Protopie's advanced features to make this even better. And this is not going to be possible in Figma, but it will be possible using Protopie. You'll recall that I started with a composition in Figma that had some smart animate between scenes and it had some scrolling containers. And it gets the job done, but it's not fantastic. So I can scroll this container. And if I have this scroll all the way to the top and I click on Outcome the Wolves, it looks like it's animating correctly. And if I scroll this down and up and down, it looks like it's, it's working exactly as you'd expect. But if I scroll this down a little bit and I tap again on here, uh, you're going to see that the, the animation goes to this kind of like this halfway point. And if I scroll this down more, uh, things just stop working. And it's even worse if I have something further down the scroll here. If I tap on this one, it's just not doing what you'd expect it would do. But then I brought this into Protopie. And Protopie handled this better. If I preview this, you're going to see that if I scroll down a little bit here and I click on this one, it is animating things properly and things go back to where they where they should be. So it does kind of work, but I don't like that my scrolling lists are moving up and down. Even though that's exactly what you'd expect with Smart Animate, it is animating the scroll back and forth. I actually want this to behave a little bit differently. I want it to behave such that when I click on this one here, it's going to animate here without moving my scroll in the background here. And similarly, if I have this scrolled, I don't want to move that scroll either. And we can do that in Protopie. We've got to do a little bit of a trick to do it, but it is possible. So let's start. We'll do it here first. What I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to copy my album cover here. And I'm going to paste it. But I'm going to put it uh, over here. I'm going to size it the same as this one right here. So that one is sized to 100 by 100. I'm going to size this one to 100 by 100. Okay, and we're just going to leave this uh, positioned off the screen. I'm also going to rename it, and this is going to be our cover to scale. And if you recall from my first example, the way Smart Animate works is the same items with the same name in both scenes get animated. So if I go over to my details, my scrolling details over here, I would need to rename this. Let's grab the thing over here. We call this cover to scale. We need to rename this cover to scale. And this won't work yet, by the way, so I'm going to demonstrate that. So if I click on this, I'm now just getting a crossfade. That's the default that happens in Smart Animate when uh, the items don't match between scenes. They don't match because they're not nested the same. You'll notice that this cover to scale is at the same level as header. And that's actually, let's drag it in between the header and the scroll frame. This one would actually have to be in the same spot, so I'd have to drag this out between the header and the scroll frame for this to work properly. So we'll go back here, and I'm going to preview this, and you're gonna say I got the animation, but I want that to animate from this spot here. So I have to do a little bit of work on my tap to move this guy to be in line with there, but wherever that happens to be scrolled. So if I've if I've scrolled this a little bit, it's going to move it to that spot, or I've scrolled it here. So we have to do a little bit of math and a quick move response before the jump. So that's the tap on this interaction. That's this one right here. And let's add a move response. And we want to move the cover to scale object. And I want to move it to X20 because that is where these items are located. And the Y, I have to do a little bit of a calculation. I'm going to use a formula here. So this will be, I, will, I need to move it to the same position as this relative to the scroll position in the container. 
So I'm going to do a calculation. The top of the scroll container plus the Y location of the album cover within the scroll container and then subtract the scroll offset. So if I've scrolled down by 10 pixels, then I need to offset that by 10 pixels. So let's first grab the scroll frames Y position plus we want the and out come the wolves cover. That's this one. It's Y position minus the scroller frames scroll offset. And let's just turn off the jump for a second here. So we should see this happen. And in order to see it in action, I'm going to put it over top here. So if I preview this and I tap here, you're going to see it move that to the right spot. And if I scroll this up and I click it again, you're going to see it's moving it to the right spot relative to wherever I have it scrolled. We're going to use that as our starting point for the scale. But I don't want this animated. I don't want to see it move across my scene. So I'm going to make sure it's dragged off of the uh, off of the scene and my move, I'm going to turn the duration down to zero. Now when I preview this, and I click on that. Oh, well, we got to turn our jump back on, of course. Now when I preview this and I click on that, now I have, did you see that? And now watch what happens when I scroll this. Okay, we're going to fix that in a second. But watch what happens now when I click this. It's now scaling from that spot in the scroll container. Okay, that's partly what we need to do. We need to fix this. When I come back, we need to fix my um, my album cover being stuck here. We can add a start trigger here. Now this is an interesting way that the start trigger works. It's a bit of a misunderstanding, but if you click on this restart every time, what this means, it doesn't restart the scene every time the scene loads, it just means that this start trigger will run every time the scene loads. It's probably labeled incorrectly, but understand that, you know, even though I have this scrolled down maybe 20 pixels, when this start jump, it's not going to reset that scroll. It's just going to do any of the responses that are under here. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to reset, where's my reset? I'd like to reset my cover to scroll, cover to scale, reset that, and just put it back off screen, and we want to do that. So essentially, after the jump happens, and that's why I've chosen start after jump, by the way. If I do start with jump, then it'll move it the soon the jump starts. I want this to move after the jump is done. So I'm going to use start after jump. Now let's preview this. And if I go back, and if I scroll this down, okay, I still have my scroll moving up and down. That's because the container has the name scroll frame here in this scene and scroll frame in the second scene. Let's call this track list because it doesn't contain everything anymore. It just contains the, uh, the tracks under there. And if we preview this, you're going to see if I scroll this, it's scrolling the track list, but not the, um, not the album cover. Now we'll go back to our scrolling list scene. And because I changed the name, it's not going to animate between those two anymore. We're not going to see everything move. So if I preview this and I scroll down a little bit, tap on Rancid, and I click back. And even if I scroll this a little bit and I tap back, there we go. I have everything moving back to where it needs to be without extra scrolling. In my second scene, I can still maintain scrolling. I can make it such that when I scroll down here, my album cover will scroll up as well. And we can use chain for that. So let's add a chain trigger. Chain, and I'd like to chain the track list in its scroll position. And I just want to make sure that this moves in lockstep. So for every pixel scrolled, I want to move the album cover up by the same number of pixels. So as long as my move, and we will do the move on the cover to scroll, cover to scale. As long as the number of pixels moved in my range here match, it'll just move in lockstep. So we'll do scroll, and I'm just going to use a big number here, 3000. And my cover to scale here is starts at 114. 114, and as long as it's 
114 plus 3000. As long as the number of pixels matches, we're going to see now when I scroll this. Okay, obviously the wrong direction. So I need to do 114 minus 3000. And now I can scroll all the way to the bottom and it's scrolling my album cover. Now, what if my track list, what if my scrolling container uses the over scroll here? So if I try to scroll and I try to go further, right, what happens if I go down here? Well, I'd like the album cover to move with that as well. So let's add some negative scroll to our chain. So let's do negative 1000. And we'll do 114 plus 1000. Now, if I scroll this down and I scroll this all the way up, now the album cover moves in lockstep. And the benefit of that is it will animate back. So if I start from here, it will animate back to that same location. This, you can see when it animates back, maybe I don't want to animate it back to this scroll position. Maybe I want it animated back to every time I go from the first scene to the second scene, I want it at this position here. Well, we can do that again with the start trigger that's here. Do a start. And this time I want to do the start with the jump because I want to ha have it happen as soon as I click the trigger from the, the first scene. I am going to scroll the track list. I'm going to scroll it to zero. And again, I don't want to have this animated here. Okay, so we'll go back to the first scene. Okay, that seems to be working. Let's scroll this down a little bit. And if I scroll it again, well, that didn't work. We didn't click restart every time. Very important, we need re restart every time Okay, so let's go back to our scrolling list. We start from here. Here, we scroll this down a little bit. And I go back, it takes me to that spot. And if I go here, okay, almost did what we needed to do. But you will notice that it tried to put the album cover at its last known location. And that's because we have the album cover chained to the scroll position. That chain is not firing until the jump is done. So in our start here, we actually want to move our album cover back to 114 here. So we're going to do the same thing. We'll do a move of the album cover. That is cover to scale, and we'll move it back to 114, and no animation. So we'll go back here. Let's try this again. Preview this. I'm going to scroll this a little bit, tap on this. I get my animation happening. Scroll this a little bit, click back. Okay, our experience is almost working exactly the way we'd like, but we do have a little bit of jankiness here. So if I scroll this up and I click on Outcome the Wolves, you're going to see for a brief second I get those, uh, those album covers. They're showing up over top of my header. We're seeing that just a little bit of a, of a blip there, right? We can control that, and right now our scrolling list that we have here, that's all of our items in here, are not set to clip the sublayers here. Even though my header is layered over top, that uh, Smart Animate sometimes will give you visual anomalies. But if I turn on Clip Container with this, and if I go into this one and in my scrolling list here, do the same thing, now that should look nice and smooth. So if I scroll down a little bit, click on and out come the wolves. I get my animation happening exactly the way I like, and I can scroll this down a little bit. It goes back to exactly where it was, and if I click on this again, it goes back to my initial spot. The last thing I'd like to happen here is right now I can scroll the bottom of the container here, but if I try to scroll the top, it doesn't scroll. And that is because in my scrolling container here, even though the scrolling container is, it goes all the way up to the top here, the album cover is blocking that signal to go through. I've got to turn on make lower layers touchable. Oh, sorry, not on that, on the album cover. Now when I preview this, yeah, there we go. Now I can scroll anywhere from in here. So if I start from scrolling list, preview this, 
scroll down a little bit, tap on and out come the wolves, scroll this down a little bit, I go back, and let's scroll this down a little bit, and it's taking me back to the same spot. And there you go, easy as pie, advanced smart jump in ProtoPie.